Welcome to Zojo, the easiest tool for creating your own web apps. Zojo is made up of a rich set of graphical user interface objects, a modern object-oriented language, an integrated debugger, and a multi-platform compiler. Together they make up the Zojo Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. If you haven't already done so, now is the time to start Zojo. When it finishes launching, the project chooser appears. Zojo lets you build several different types of apps, desktop, web, console, and iOS. For this quick start, you're building a web app, so click on web. Now there's three fields that need values. The application name, which we're gonna enter flag search. The company name is the name of your company. You may choose to leave this blank or leave it as the default. And the application identifier is a unique identifier for this app. It will automatically populate using what you enter for the application and company names, but you can also change it to whatever you want. Now we're gonna click OK. Now we have a workspace window that displays our project with the default web page displayed in the layout editor. There are three areas I want to call out to you. First on the left, you'll see the navigator. This shows all of the items in your project. By default, you can see web page one, which is selected. You'll use the navigator to navigate within your project. Next, this main area is the layout editor. This is where you design the user interface for the windows in your app. It shows the window and previews how it looks when the app is run. And on the right, this is the library. This shows the controls and interface elements that you can add to a window or to the project. So let's start developing our first app. We're going to be using three controls, the text field, the button, and the image viewer. So first in the library, we're gonna click on the text field and drag it to the top left corner of the web page in the layout editor. As we get close, you saw that the alignment guides popped up to help us position the control. Now we're gonna click on the default button and drag it to the top right corner of the page. And again, those alignment guides show us where to place it. And third, we're gonna drag the image viewer control so that it's underneath the text field. Field to show the selection handles. Click the center right handle and drag it to the right until it's close enough to the button. Now we're going to click on the image viewer to select it. We're going to drag the selection handle in the controls lower right corner and resize it to fill the remaining space. There's more to creating a nice user interface than just dragging and dropping controls, of course. You'll need to make a few changes to finish your interface. So first, we're going to cl click the Inspector button in the toolbar. The Inspector now is now displayed where the library was. We're going to click on the Default button in the Layout Editor. Notice that the Inspector now displays various attributes of the button. These attributes are called properties. We're going to find the caption property and change the value from OK to search. Since we want the button to stay on the right side of the page, should the user make the page wider or narrower, we need to tell Zojo that the distance from the edge of the control to the edge of the page should always stay the same. That way, when the window in which the page is displayed is made larger or smaller, the control will stay locked to the right side automatically. This is done with the control locking properties. In the inspector, notice that the locking section shows four locks. The top and left are already selected, indicating that the button's top and left sides are locked by default. Click the lock on the right side to lock the right side of the button to the right side of the page. Click the lock on the left side to unlock the button from the left side of the page. 
This way the button will move rather than grow or shrink as the page changes width. Now we'll click on the text field to select it. Since you want the text field to become wider or narrower with, with the window, click on the lock on the right hand side to lock the text field's right side to the right side of the page. Now click on the image viewer to select it. In the inspector, click on the right and bottom locks to lock the in image viewer to that side of the page. Now click on the web page's title bar. Grab the selection handle in the lower right hand corner and try resizing it a bit to see how the text field and image viewer behave with their locking properties changed. Now it's time to add some code. When we start writing code, sometimes we need to refer to the web page or controls on the web page. Zojo gives them names by default, such as web page one, button one, etc. But those names are not particularly descriptive. Giving web pages and controls sensible names will help make your code easier to read. So let's do it. We're going to click on the web page title to select web page one. In the inspector, change the name from web page one to flag search. Change the title property to flag search. Now we'll click on the text field. In the inspector, change the name to search field. Change the hint property to enter the name of a country. Now click on the button to select it. In the inspector, change the name of the button to search button. Change the caption to search if it's not already changed and click on the image viewer to select it. Now change the name property to flag viewer. Our application is almost complete. Now it's time to add the code that will find the flag based upon the country name the user enters and displays it in the flag viewer control. Zojo uses an object-oriented programming language that is quite easy to, year, to learn. You need only three simple lines of code to finish your project. So, let's, we, the code will execute when the user presses the search button. So we're going to start by double-clicking on the search button. And since we want the code to execute when the control is pressed, we will make sure pressed is select, selected and push OK. So now it launches the code editor. So let's go line by line and look at the code we've got to input. This first line creates a variable called search value whose type is a string, meaning that it can contain characters. The second line takes the value property of the search field control and replaces any spaces with a dash, then assigns that value to the search value variable.
Okay, and the third and final line combines a URL that accesses the search API of the web service that provides the flags with the contents of the search value variable and assigns it all to the URL property of the flag viewer control. Assigning a URL to this property automatically forces the control to attempt to access a picture at that location. So let's run our code and see what happens. A new browser window is launched and here is our app. And we see that the hint we input before enter the name of a country is displayed as well as our search button. So let's type a country in, press search, and you see the, the country flag for Spain appears. And you can play around with a little bit. And there you go. Thank you for working through the Zojo Web Quick Start with me today and making our Flag Viewer app. Next, I encourage you to work through the Zojo Web Tutorial for a deeper dive into building web applications with Zojo.